Hello friends. So now this is the sixth lecture on Indo-European languages. Not Indo-European languages actually, the history of the English language. So the first topic we have done, the origin of language, and second topic now we are doing, that is uh, the Indo-European family of languages, and we are trying to locate English in the Indo-European family. That's what we are, we are doing now. Well, yesterday you saw, I mean in the last class we saw in the European two branches that is broadly we divide this into Eastern and Western. Eastern uh, we saw that the Indo-Iranian, Albanian, Armenian and Balto-Slavic and uh, you know the most prominent branch we can say or language is the Sanskrit that is in the indo Iranian group, Sanskrit. For Sanskrit, we, we take words from Sanskrit to represent all the uh, branches of the Eastern, Eastern side. Now, the, on the Western side, we are the most important language is Latin. And so we take words from that to compare uh, Eastern and Western. And from this, we know, you know that Sadam and Kendu. Sadam is a Sanskrit language. It begins with S and uh, Kendum is Latin and it begins with the K. Although it is written C, it is pronounced K and uh, therefore you call it Kendum and this is just a Sadam. Sadam means 100, Kendum also means 100. So that is the commonality between the two. All these things I think I have already explained to you. Now there is no need, further explanation will only really confuse you. <laughs> if I go on explaining this, you know. It will confuse you, alright? So, you, you let's uh, take a Western branch of the Indo European. Today, we will consider the Western branches. On Western branches, Indo European, we have two broad divisions you have seen Eastern and Western. Eastern we call Sadam because the word meaning 100. The word for 100 in Sanskrit is Sadam. And, uh, Western we call Kendum, Kendum, because the word meaning does ordinarily spelled K. Now it is Kendum, Kendum. Same. Instead of C or K, pronunciation is same. K. So that's we call the Kendum language. Kendum languages. Now in the Western brand we have already seen the first is since we don't have. Yeah, I will just show you that the four branches you can see one is the Hellenic Hellenic branch where you have got Greek language the, then you have the Italic where you have got the Latin and you have got the and the next one is you have seen Celtic now it is spoken by say, some people in Ireland and Scotland and Wales that's all and now, once upon a time, it was a very, uh, it was spoken extensively. So, in different parts of Sweden and all the today's modern Sweden and all those places. Now, and you have got the Germanic. Germanic, or you have called Teutonic. Teutonic, because those speakers were known as Teutons. That's why this Indian language Indians. So, Teutons, they are Teutons. They are tribe, I mean, Tribes, you know, that we will see uh, just after five, let me say, two or three classes. Within two or three classes, we will be, we will come and meet them, okay? We will meet those people. That is two tons. What is their importance, etc. We will see. I hope that you have now understood. You have got a picture of the whole thing now, okay? So we have got the Western branch. Western, and uh, we are going to do first is Hellenic. Hellenic. Hellenic branch. Now Hellenic, these people, you know, they first started their settlement in the Aegean region. Aegean, A-E-G-E-A-N, Aegean, Aegean Sea, you know, Aegean Sea, Aegean Islands. From there they enter the Greek mainland, then into Asia and so on. Now actually what happened is, you know, there, what we can, we, we, just as we have got Mahabharata and Ramayana, they have, they have got the literary monuments, two 
Early, earliest literary monuments there, you know that this is Homeric poems, Iliad and the Odyssey. So that is dates sometime 8th century BCE, 8th century. Remember this people came in, in, in uh, 2000 BC. So from 8th century BC you have got uh, this uh, uh, Homeric poems, very famous now, yes. Now you have got uh, five dialects here. Five dialects, dialect means a spoken variety, spoken by some people. There is Ionic, Attic, Eolic, Arcadian and Doric. Ionic, that is, uh, these are dialects of uh, Hellenic branch. Ionic, sorry, Eolic, Attic, and uh, Ionic, Attic, Eolic, and uh, you have got Arcadian and Doric. Arcadian, Arcadian and Doric. Now of this, now today we are concerned about Attic. Attic is the, Attic was the dialect or language used by Athenians, Athens. Athens and Greece as a whole, we remember the glorious period was that of Pericles. Pericles. P E R I C L E S Pericles. Now Athens was a center of activity, academic, academic art. Then mm -hmm. you have got poetry, that is poetry, uh, history, all sorts of things. Uh, philosophy, yes. So you have got uh, in the names of uh, Sophocles, Euripides, Aeschylus for uh, uh, tragedy, Aristophanes for comedy, Plato and Arist uh, Aristotle for uh, Plato and Aristotle for philosophy, then Herodotus and Thucydides for the history, the big people, the big people as. Yes. So then what happens is, so this is, that is the picture of what you get of, uh, what you get of Attic there. Now Athens, Athens was very important and therefore uh, the Attic dialect, that is dialect used by or the variety of Hellenic or the variety of the Greek language used by the Athenians became the standard Greek language. Just as later you will see in the standard English language. English, the standard English language was the dialect spoken in and, in and around London because that was chosen, that was selected as the standard one because of the importance of the political, commercial and academic importance of London. Exactly like that you have got others. Listen. So then, uh, as I, today you can see uh, the American language. Americans, we know American English, but uh, there are some ex people who hold extreme views. They say that it is not American English, but it is American language. <laughs> yes. Then, uh, there, it has become so powerful because the country is powerful. Understand? So the power of a language or the importance of a language depends on the people who speak it. That's the thing. So in this case it is Athens. Now as you can see next to any consider Italic branch, you find no? Latin became a classical language and uh, all the writings in philosophy, theology, science and arts and so on done in Latin because of the importance of Rome. So if the, the language, importance of a language depends on the importance of the people who speak it and also the political backing of the, that uh, region, the political importance of that region. So in this case it is Ati. And already I have told you about a lot of people. Then there is a popular variety called Demotic. A Demotic, Demo, means people. Demotic, that is also used. So this is the condition today. And you know about the famous uh, writers, now that is Doric uh, dialect also is, uh, has, has also a good literary importance. That's not, no. Now this is Asia Minor in Egypt, then Mesopotamia, Syria, and then also you can see Byzantine literature. Most of the Byzantine literature written by, written in Greek language. Why Asia Minor, then Mesopotamia, then uh, and uh, Turkey, part of Turkey, and Syria and so on. Why? Because of the expansion. 
Pericles and Alexander the Great, they took the language in them. Listen. So once they have been colonized, then what will happen? The colonies, uh, colonies will be, in one or other way, will be compelled to speak the language of the conqueror. And this is what happened with all this post-colonial literature. You have got a huge body of literature called post-colonial literature. What is the reason? As all, the whole thing is in English. Most of it, 90% of the Venice post-colonial literature, we speak in terms of English literature in the colonies. Why? Because they were the Congress. And uh, so they imposed their language or the political importance of their language and therefore uh, they started writing in the literary significance. The language has got the literary significance. So exactly like that here, Syria, Mesopotamia, Asia, Mino and so on, because expansion of the Greek Empire. Understand? So it was spoken extensively and today of course nobody speaks uh, the it is not a spoken language now. That is classical Greek Greece, Greek is not a spoken language. Except otherwise I think you have got the demotic or koine, there is a common variety. Koine. K-O-I-N-E. Koine. Koine means common. Yes. Koinonia. That means meeting together of people. That's koinonia. That's koinonia. So today we find it in the form of uh, dialects and the most important dialect is that of Attic. Not a classical Greek novel. Greek, classical Greek is a dead language. Dead in the sense that it is not spoken. Like Latin. Classical Latin is not spoken. Like Sanskrit. Sanskrit is not spoken. Classical Sanskrit is not spoken language. That's the meaning when you say this. I hope you got an idea about this now. Hellenic. The Hellenic people, they first uh, slowly ended the Asian, Asian region. Means nearby places, the islands of the, in the Indian Sea, then got into the mainland and passed on to the Asia Minor and they established their power there. And after that, what happens, you know, the Attic dialect, there are many dialects, all these, the most important is Attic dialect, that is because of the importance of the Athens. And you know, they are just an assembly of great writers, historians, Herodotus, or Thucydides, these are historians. Philosophers, world famous. To even today, when you are speaking or writing or studying poetics, uh, the, the first word is that of Aristotle. So, you take Aristotle, then you have got Horace, then you have got Sidney, and then John Dryden, and continue. Everywhere you find the echo of Aristotle. Without Aristotle, there is no literary theory. Literary theory means Aristotle. So, basic, you know, before going for your, uh, this uh, John Dryden and Pope and Dr. Johnson and all those things, you know, the first thing that you should do is study, make a very, what is it, very thorough study of Aristotle's poetics. Because all the other things, you know, it comes from all, this is the authority, yes. Horse, what is Arthur Horse? Same thing again. Longinus, Aristotle's poetics. Understand that? You can take any of this, you will find without an echo of the Aristotle's poetics, there can be absolutely even the so called, uh, the, what do you call it, the traditional the individual talent, you will find the echoes of that, echoes of Aristotle's poetics in that. Understand that? Yes. If you make a close study of that. So that's the importance, yes. See the Greek language, how the Greek language became so important because of the writers, political importance. See, and that is whenever when you think of narrative poems, epic poems, you, what comes to your mind is immediately Homer. When you think of tragedies, what comes is your you, Euripides, then Aeschylus, and you have got uh, what is uh, when you think about orators, it is Domestinus. Euripides, then you have got uh, Sophocles and uh, comedy, you have got uh, uh, Aristophanes. Orator, Domestines. Philosopher, Plato and Aristotle. Historian, Herodotus and uh, Thucydides. Then the simple reason that uh, uh, there is no wonder, so to say. It is, a, it is not a surprising, it is not surprising or it is not any, a, anything, uh, anything wonderful that uh, 
in, cla in classical Latin once ruled over the realms of academics, the realms of art, the realms of history, the realms of uh, oratory, and all the realms of sciences. Understand? And also political, political backing by Pericles and uh, Alexander the Great. I think you got an idea about that. Okay, Helen. And then, some days for exam, you may get a short note like this. Write a short note on Hellenic branch. You know, very simple notes for Homer and Leah. Then he comes in Italy. The Italic brand is, you know, Italy. From the name itself, you know, Italy. See? Different countries in Italy, you can see. And the most famous or the classical one was Latin. Latin, the language of Latium. That's why it's called Latin. Latium or Latium. Latium. And again, the importance of Rome. Wherever, wherever Rome established its power, its empire, they took Caesar, they took uh, language with them. That's why today we have in Spain, France, Spain, Portuguese, you will find that the, there is remnants of the Roman Empire there. And it is from Latin, not classical Latin, but the vulgar Latin. Vulgar. Vulgar means, you know, not, not the meaning that you have today. Vulgar means popular. Those days, popular, vulgar. Ulgata. They say Ulgata. Ulgata is the word. See? So, vulgar Latin means popular Latin. Popular Latin means spoken Latin. The Romance language of today. Fran, French. Then, the other Romance language is French. Uh, that we will see, then you have got uh, Italian, it's a Romance language. Italian, Spanish, is a Romance language. French, Italian, Spanish, these are Romance languages. They descended from uh, Vulgata. Vulgata means, uh, actually it is a vulgar Latin, it's a vulgar or popular Latin. Once upon a time, when you say you are a vulgar person, means a popular person. <laughs> a vulgar leader means a very popular. Ulga means crowd. Ulga. So Ulgata. It's appreciated by the crowd. One of the translations of the Bible is known as Ulgata. That is popular version of the Bible, not the classical version. So what is important today for Latin is that again Latin is very important classical language. As you can see, then you have got uh, writers. Uh, the Cicero, yes. Virgil. So, Romance languages of today, they are not, they are not the descendants of classical language, classical Latin used by Cicero or Virgil, but they are the descendants of uh, vulgar Latin, popular Latin, uh, spoken by the common people. And you have got Romance languages like French, Italian and also uh, the Spanish and so on. So that is about Italic branch and the most important. And Italic in uh, and in, in in France you will find uh, there is one Paris dialect of Paris and also another another form of French language called Provenga. Provenga. Now you remember now in Keats it speaks about Provenga wine, Provenga song. Provangal song. Miss Provangal means troubadours. That means uh, traveling poets. They used to sing uh, songs. They are travel around uh, in this dialect. Provangal. Provangal. That means a kind of uh, dialect we can say spoken variety used for singing and so on. So troubadours, you know, you know minstrels or troubadours. You know? They were, they were singing poets. They used to go traveling and singing. They used to go from place to place and singing and traveling. Going to different places means traveling and then singing and uh, enjoying maybe or some collecting money or for some livelihood and so on. Troubadours of France, very, very famous those people, you know, because they were, they, 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 they delighted people, so to say. So you have got this picture of Italy. Most important is the Latin, and Latin is the classical language. Today, like Greek and uh, 
Sanskrit, uh, Latin is also a dead language, not used by anybody. Today in Eastern, you, you see Italian, Italian you see, Italian you see, Italian. Italian, then you, go, you got uh, another version of this uh, spoken Latin is, you have got uh, uh, French, in French you have two, one is the dialect classical uh, French used in, spoken in Paris and around that, and then you have got the, the other Provengal, and that is that the troubadours used to go around and sing. Okay, I think that is clear, you know, Portugal, all these languages are called Romance. Romance here means modern languages. Not that when you speak, Romance come. No, no, not that. No, or you are using it for Romance, no, no, not that. Modern language. When you say classical language, then the other side is a Romance language, that's all. Understand? Not other, it is used for Romance, no. If you speak Italian, then there are some, then there will be some uh, romantic responses from somewhere. No, no, not such a thing. It's, it's modern language, that's all. I hope it is clear to you now. And now comes the third thing, it, it, Celtic language. Celtic, I have already told you, one of the most important branches of the Indo-European. The, the Celts used it, Celts. Celtic. The language of the Celts. You know, actually when uh, the Anglo-Saxons came to England, that is around 450 AD, the inhabitants of England were Celts. The original inhabitants of England, they were the Celts. And the native language of England, the original, so to say, language of England was Celtic language, not English language. And these Anglo-Saxons were very, very belligerent people, fighting, and they forcefully settled there and they pushed the Poor Celts, come there comparatively, they were very pacifist, it is, it is seen. Means peace loving people. So they moved from that place and they went to Ireland, Ireland, Scotland, and, uh, and that area, hilly areas. So now they are, they are, uh, their descendants are there. Some of them speak Celtic language, but not much now because it's not, a, it's, it's not extensively spoken. Once upon a time it was, but not now. So that's not that much, we don't know anything much about them also. There is no uh, 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 significant literary, uh, any book of literary significance, we don't know. Uh, or some people may know, but that is not, that is not recorded in books. Uh, that is, uh, I, I haven't come across, I can only say that. But there, are, there may be, but not like Latin and Greek and all those things. Not as important as that little tick today. It's not important. So then fourth and the most important branch is for us is English. So not English, West Germany. Germany. Germany is also known as I already Teutonic. Teutonic because spoken by Teutons. Listen, Teutons. And then you have got uh, it's a very important branch. As far as English is concerned, it is really important. You have got Teutonic branch, primitive Germanic and primitive Teutonic, they should say many. Now you have got a Germanic East, three branches here. Now this is important for us, you know, East, North and West. East, North and West Germanic. East Germanic, North Germanic and West Germanic. East Germanic you have, you have <coughs> branches like Gothic, Burgundian and Mandalic. So you have from here other branches like this Gothic branch, Gothic Burgundian, Burgundian, and you have to Vandalic, Vandalic. So these are the three branches here. Gothic. Gothic is you know Gothic because the Bible was translated in in the Gothic language. So also the Greek language. The Greek language is the language of the New Testaments. That's important there. You can uh, mention that if you are writing about Hellenic. The, the, the New Testament was written in the Greek language. Understand? So that's important. Right? So, religious significance is there. 
Yeah, so then we have got North, North they have got Scandinavian, Norwegian, Danish, Icelandic, Swedish, Norwegian, Norwegian, Danish, Icelandic, Icelandic, listen, Icelandic, these are the names that we should remember, because Swedish, Swedish, or Sweden, I think that is, this is Norwegian, uh, Scandinavian, some of these Scandinavian languages. There are all Danish and Scandinavian, Norwegian. You find the mix, mixing of all these things. Understand? So, you have got East. East, you have Gothic, Burgundian, Vandalic. That's why it is like this because it will be easy for you to remember. Not branch, but these are all come, they come under this. Uh, Gothic. Sorry, Gothic, then uh, yeah, Burgundian, Burgundian, and then uh, and uh, Vandalic. Now, that's the names. When you come to West German, that's the most important. These book, these yeah, these are not the Gothic is not West, but Burgundian and Vandalic uh, not very familiar to us now. Yes. We are not familiar to that, this language. Norwegian, you can say Danish, you can say Icelandic, Swedish, Scandinavian, this is known to us. Now, West German, you have got a High German and Low German. So, you have got two High German and Low German. Now, we are coming to the birth of English. So, beware, be careful, attend. Come on, author, concentrate on this, understand. You have got a high German, you have old, middle, modern German. Old, old German, German, middle German, middle German, and modern German. Modern German. So, modern German is the literary language of Germany today, modern German. And then you have got low, this is low German, you have got a Old Saxon, Old Frangonian, Old Frisian, Old Saxon, Old Frangonian, uh, Old Frisian, Old English. So here you go. Together it is called Anglo Frisian. Anglo so, now you know, where does English stand? English is descending in the European West, Western branch or Kentum branch, the Germanic, Germanic East, North, West, and uh, there you have West, High German and Lower German, and here Lower German, you have Old Saxon, Old Franconian. All freezing, all English, together you can say Anglo freezing. So you can see where do we stand now. You can trace the descent of English. Suppose you are, uh, you want a suggested brief summary of this, I'll just now show you how it can be done. Alright, is that clear to you know? Yes. And also we have seen Anatolian and Hittite, two other branches. You can mention that when you are, if you are writing about the Indo -European, Indo European family. These were discovered later, and therefore they are not included in this uh, division, that's all. Okay, so you have got first, you have got the Indo-European, a summary of this, Indo-European languages. Indo-European, you have got two branches, Eastern, Western. So now we move. And Western, you have got uh, all the other things leave out, just we are now coming to this. From Western, you have the uh, Germanic. Germanic or Teutonic. Teutonic. And from Teutonic, you have what is the immediate uh, that concerns us. That is, you have got West German. So, just some of them. then you have got uh, West Germanic. West Germanic. Germanic. And West Germanic, you have got a 
immediate descendant, that is low, low germanic. So this low germanic and from low germanic you have you have Anglo Frisian. Anglo Frisian. And this includes old English. Now we will be concentrating on Old English. Very simple. Even if you forget this, don't worry about that. So that is. So how many steps we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So to trace the origin of English in the Indo-European family, you can, if you have time. Do all these things. Indo European, Eastern, Western, Eastern, Southern, Western, Gindam, then you have got Eastern branches, Indo European, Albanian, Armenian, Bardoslavic, Western branches, you have got uh, Greek, sorry, Hellenic, Italic, Celtic, and then Germanic, and then you can give all the other divisions if you want to. But no, I don't think that is required. And then immediately you can switch over to this. Uh, Western branch and Germanic branch and from Germanic you can see you have got uh, East, North, West Germanic, from West Germanic you have got uh, uh, Low Germanic, Low Germanic you have got uh, anglo frisian then all English. It's simple. It's very simple. <laughs> so simple as that. I hope it is clear to you. You, are, uh, you have enjoyed this uh, wonderful, uh, not, not wonderful class, but this wonderful uh, history, so to say. You will be some sometimes you will be you will be thinking, why you so when you, when you study these things, you know, when you know these things, we we can we we find the futility of fighting over languages. This is a, some people say uh, we are superior, some other people say we are superior. See that? Then for the language la language is an issue for many people. The fight is uh, for superiority. No such thing. Because today, most of the languages spoken in the world today, Australia, English, and English has become a world language. For some known reason or unknown reason. That you don't know. Maybe it is divine providence if you believe in that. Or maybe it is because it is so. It is like that. So, you see, Indo-European is the Great, 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 seven, seven great people. The, <laughs> the great grandfather of ancestor of Proto Indo European English is coming. It is the wiring you can see now, simple. The wiring is like this. Do you mean? Western branch, Germanic, West Germanic, Low Germanic. And old, old, old Frisian, old English, or you can say Anglo Frisian and English. Now we have to see where is it now? Who is speaking this Anglo Frisian? It is in the German, Western German, German, Germanic tribes. Now Anglo Frisian that is used with Germanic tribes. Understand? Or you can say. The Frisian, old Frisian is used to be the Germanic tribes. Now you have to bring them to England. Only then history of the English language begins in England. That is in 450 AD. But before that, what was the situation? That you have to see now. What was the situation in England before 450 AD? 450. So now we have traced the origin of English. That's what we have been doing so far. I think that you have understood, you have enjoyed, and you have been, uh, you have, you will get some benefit out of this. I don't say this is the only channel for you to learn these things. This is only what is called one of them. So at least you got an idea. Now you will be able to write an essay or some short notes here and there. What is Western branch? What is Eastern branch? What is Hellenic? What is Italic? What is indo -Uranian? These are the most important branches. No? indo uranian is very important. Balkoslavic is modern because of this Russia, importance of Russia, Poland and so on. And then you have got uh, the Greek, 
important, classical language, Latin important, Sanskrit important, and German important. Other languages, not, not that they are unimportant, but this is the, what you can say, the milestone. So you know, understand? I hope you are all right, you are fine, and you are enjoying, and I hope that you will continue to enjoy, and more and more lectures I will be uploading, but in the meanwhile, you should. Uh, uh, what you should do for me is a very simple thing that is you should subscribe to my channel <laughs> so that you get uh, updates and understand that. And not only you get updates, I also get some updates. Right? Yes. Okay. Till we meet again. Bye. Have a nice time.